Hey, uh, thanks for coming back, everybody. Uh, we're talking about the uh, about Jeb Bush and South Carolina. We're going to move along into some other stuff, but I, I guess to kind of to button button all that up. So you had Trump coming in, just doubling up his next two people, and then you had Rubio eking out a second place victory over Ted Cruz. Now, do you see this as people lining up behind Rubio and with Jeb out of the race, is they going to help him a little, a little bit? Or are you seeing that Rubio and Cruz at this point are just the second, they're the second choice and they're kind of a coin flip for most conservatives? Well, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, that's the truth. They're probably a coin flip. There's a lot of people that could go either way. Um, I, you know, the the one thing that, that I found that strange is a lot of the conservative bloggers that I talk to, a lot of the conservative bloggers that I that I follow are sitting there going like, well, hold on, I'm not going to attack, it doesn't matter, Rubio Cruz, whoever they, they don't like, I'm going to stop attacking them because it's just splitting our party apart. Terrific. Why don't you come up with that idea six months ago? That would have been much more helpful than right now at this juncture. What is essentially happening is if you add up the people that support Rubio versus the people that support Cruz, add them together, you're talking about 60 to 70 percent of the all the votes. Donald Trump hovers right around a third. Sometimes he dips down to a quarter. Sometimes he bumps up to 40, but he's hovering right around a third. The other two thirds of, of people that are serious are, you know, behind Cruz and Rubio. And then there's a bunch of the also rans. You know, then that would include Carson. The problem is, is you're part of the problem. Now, I have a great deal of admiration for Steve Days for where he came from, built himself up. He's got a terrific political analytical mind. He is correct more often than he is incorrect. Here's what the problem is. He's out there a couple of days ago saying, well, I'm done attacking the other side. I'm done with this. I had to pray overnight. You know what? Attacking the other side does not make your side better. What makes your side better is promoting your side. And he's out there. And I, don't get me wrong. This guy is a true believer. Stephen Dace, he get, I'm positive that his support of Cruz is what cost him a lot of the work that he'd been doing before. Right? Uh, I can't I think it, was a, uh, it wasn't Clear Channel. It was a different radio group. And he's having to rebuild himself because of his support. Well, the bottom line is you can't continue to tear down fellow Republicans who are ideologically similar to you and expect good things to happen. You can't expect God to bless that kind of behavior. And the last thing, and this is a point that he made to, to all my Christian friends out there, you have to stand back and let God guide you. And I can tell you at this point, Maybe Steve Dace has come around. Maybe Shannon Vanderhart has come around. Wes Enos might have come around. All these conservatives. Craig Robinson, maybe. But the bottom line is, is you have to step back and let God guide your candidate. You have to get out there and work. But tearing down other Republicans only does the Democrats' job for them. And it makes great money for those non-Fox media that are out there making fun of us as conservatives or it's god guiding the democrats to a win because that's what god wants anyway i think and that and that could be true um and i mean and that's where that kind of gets a a little bit um muddled but so well i was just bringing up a lot of these people are christian conservatives well let me let me well speaking of christian conservatives let's talk about uh, uh ted cruz who has got that that segment pretty well he had it locked down in iowa that's for sure um and part of running as, as a Christian conservative is you have to run with a certain level of uh, level of ethics. And so a couple of things have popped up recently where the candidates are not just calling Ted Cruz's ethics into question, they're calling him a downright liar. Now, we expect Donald Trump to say stuff like that. But now Marco Rubio, while he's not, he's a little bit more politic. Well, that, well and Carson. Car- yeah, well, and that's what I'm talking about. So, Ben Carson, we're going to just run down these three things because maybe folks don't know about the second two that have just recently happened. So, Ben Carson comes out and says, hey, um, I never told anybody I was quitting in response to the Ted Cruz statement that Ben Carson is going to suspend his campaign right after Iowa, so don't waste a vote on him, vote for Ted Cruz. Ben Carson said, I never said anything like that. I wasn't planning on doing that. That's crazy. 
Second thing, South Carolina in a um, in a picture that was run right before the Nevada caucus or right before the South Carolina primaries has a photoshopped picture, clearly photoshopped of of a beaming Marco Rubio shaking hands with Barack Obama, saying, "You know the the Rubio Obama TPP, talking about the Trans Pacific Partnership." Uh, Which, by the way, is a terrible idea. Well, and and it it clearly it, and it has no. There's nothing on the the photo that suggests that it's fake at all. But it's clear if you if you know anything about it, Ted uh, Marco Rubio wouldn't be looking at Barack Obama shaking his hand that way. So that's no, and the, and there's no attribution that it was fake when it was when it was posted. They had to come back and say, oh, yeah, well, you know, that's just a flyer or whatever. The third thing, Rick Tyler who just got fired yesterday by the Cruz campaign, circulated a video on his Facebook page of Rubio walking by a Ted Cruz staffer who was happened to be reading the Bible and saying, oh, that book doesn't have any answers in it. Right before the South Carolina, the, a heavily evangelical Christian primary on the Republican side, kind of like in Iowa, and you have this story circulated about Rubio dismissing the Bible out of hand, which then the staffer come, you know, Waves the red flag saying, no, 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 he never said that. That never happened. And now Ted, now Ted Cruz, who ran with it, told it all over the place, has to come back and walk the story back. So is this a is this a man? Now, what does it say? This is, neither of these options are good for Ted Cruz. Either he doesn't know how to run a campaign very well or he's just a liar. What do you think? Well, I don't think I have enough time remaining in this segment to go through all this stuff. So we're going to take a break, and that's what we're going to come back with. Is Ted Cruz a lion SOB, or has his staff started to run the candidate? We've talked about that a couple times before. Yes. We'll be back right after this break. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. 